our sacred mysteries in which we come to grapple with this amazing event of God coming into humanity. And Father George is here to help us at least grapple with the idea of charity. Father George. So good afternoon to all of you. Um, as it was already introduced to me today, we are dealing upon charity. The three of the theological virtues. The theological virtues figure in St. Paul's letter to the first letter to the Corinthians. And there he specifically speaks about these theological virtues. Charity is the third one. And he says that charity is the most important one as well. And then there is um, the verse coming from St. John's first epistle, where he says, chapter 4, we, 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 re, we read that God is love. God is charity. Also, he said, it is translated in different ways. Even uh, most of the places where we have a charity referred. It is now, nowadays it is being trans, translated as love as well. But love, the word, the term love is very much misleading. These days, you know, uh, in our modern parlance, the love has al almost lost its entire meaning. You know, you will love everything. <laughs> you love your soup. Okay, you love your, I mean, so many things. Okay, everything comes to be loving. That is not the sense in the Bible when we speak about love. Love has got, uh, human love has got several levels. There is a filial love, which the, the, the parents have for their own affectionate love, they call you know, the words are differing. Some might use one kind of, uh, one word for one thing, and yet another group might use the same word for another thing. So there are different, there is beginning from the self-love, erotic love, filial love, love in the friendship, and there are lots of kinds of loves. But these are not the love that is referred in the Bible because in the Bible love refers to God and God's love. God's love is different because most of our human love is based upon need. We need to be loved. We say internal necessity. I need to love someone. I need love from others. I need to love my child. I need to love my parents. That is not God's love. God's love is not coming from a need. God's love is a gift love. It's a gift. It's a gift freely given to everyone. They say it is unconditional. Yeah, to a certain extent it is unconditional. But then, when we look into the Gospels, when we look into the Scriptures, we come across several places speaking about God's love, how God loved humanity. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, begotten son, that he be sacrificed. So the theological virtue of love, actually love, or you, call, you translate it as charity, basically refers to the kind of love that is going on in God. God is love because we believe that 
in the Catholic tradition, in the Christian tradition, God is a trinity. Amen. And God cannot be a trinity because God is love. How could God be love before he created the world? He was still love even before he created the world. That means he has to be love all the time, eternally. And he has to be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You must have seen that, that uh, the, 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 there is, a, uh, there is an uh, icon of the Trinity, the three persons equally sitting around this round table. You must have seen that. In that, you know, they are, the, these three persons in God are, uh, the, uh, St. Bonaventure says that they are uh, the communion of three persons without subordination or domination. That's how he, he, he defines Godhead or God, the Trinity, tri, Trinitarian God. Without subordination or domination. So equal. That's the beauty of the Eastern concept of uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they usually always in icons you will find as three individual persons of equal stature. So we have uh, God is love and eternally he is love. And it is from his love that he created the entire universe. That's what we'll, we believe. That's our faith. And he created all of us because he loved us. Amen. And that's why we, we have come from God and certainly, as St. Augustine would say, restless is my soul until I find my rest in God. Amen. And we need to reach, this is ultimate, this is the ultimate goal of human life. Yes. And it is the ultimate possibility of human beings to reach the level of love God has given us. And the commandment, the parting commandment of Jesus. And I wouldn't say that, uh, uh, if I ask you, many of you might say that the commandment, the, tell me the commandment that Jesus has given you, given us. Some of us at least would say that Love your God with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might, and love your love the, your neighbor as yourself. No. When Jesus was asked, what does the law say, or which is the biggest or the important, most important commandment of the Old Testament, Jesus told, this is the summary of the Old Testament. This is the summary of the Old Testament or summary of the law, summary of the commandments. The law means the commandments or it, it refers to the entire Pentateuch. We know that. So that is a summary. When he was asked, he told. But that is not the commandment, Jesus' commandment. Jesus' commandment is seen just before his parting. I give you one commandment, love one another. Not complete. Not complete, as I have loved you. That is the commandment given by Jesus. Amen. That is the commandment. Of course, it has got something behind. As I have loved you. As I have loved you means, you know, God's love has to be, has to be realized here. Has to come to our life. And, you know, when we look into the world, people who are married for several years, people, people like me leading religious life, people like priests, bishops, Cardinals, do we, if we have to ask, 
have do all of them come to this charity or the love step by step to that state i must say in my life i think that many of us do not reach there many of us do not reach there but because if we love certainly we are coming from god we are god's children we have already realized our 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 uh, uh, facticity our maximum or we have all, all already conformed us ourselves because many are called but few are chosen few just arrive there we are just given this possibility of becoming like god becoming the children of god we are not yet there we are not yet there even people who may have lived 50 years 60 years 70 years may not actually have reached there so the question is the god's love which is selfless god's love is primarily selfless love our love most of the time as i told you is coming out of a need and that is at least in part selfish at least in part selfish god's love the second peculiarity or second aspect of god's love is that it is sacrificial love but in the modern times especially i don't think you know we are told time and again by our culture by the so called uh, psychological strands schools that we need not have this kind of a sacrificial nature at all in our life we need to emphasize ourselves we need to uh, to 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 uh, articulate ourselves we need to uh, uh, put ourselves exert ourselves we need to become what we are and so on of course these kinds of things i don't think uh, actually lead us to the christian spirit of loving because i'll read to you here we have one whole chapter regarding love uh, 13th chapter of the first Corinth, first letter to the corinthians speaks about entirely about love and here i read it to you it's very common it's known to you very well if i speak in the tongues of in the languages of men and of angels but have not love i am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal and if i have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge i have all knowledge i have and all mysteries i can understand and i have got prophetic powers and still if i have and i have all faith and all faith so as to remove mountains not simple faith we all have faith but jesus says about if you have a faith as much as as big as a mustard seed you could ask this mountain to be uprooted from here and go and stay in the in the in the sea it would obey and here paul is speaking about almost quoting jesus words and saying and if i have faith even to move mountains but have not love i am 
nothing. I am nothing. And if I give away all I have, if I give away all I have, I have my what, my possessions, my work, my my job, my my uh, all that I used to hold as my my own, I give away. And I have no love, nothing. And if I deliver my body to be burned, can you imagine this? And if I deliver my body to be burned, means even if I am supposed, I'm going to take up martyrdom. And still, Paul is saying, there is a possibility that you don't have still love. You haven't reached there yet. And still, I could be, I mean, deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. I gain nothing. And now, Paul goes on to say, love is patient and kind. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So now let us bring God here. We can very well replace the word here, love, with God. God is patient and kind. God is not jealous or boastful. God is not arrogant or rude. God does not insist on his own way. He is not irritable. He is not resentful. He does not rejoice at wrong. But he rejoices in the right. God bears all things. And hopes all things, endures all things. But now let us bring ourselves here. Put yourself here. You and me, Let's try to say it, I replace the word. If you have real, if you think that you have real love, you can also replace it with the word I. I am patient and kind. Okay? I am patient and kind. I am not jealous or boastful. Okay? George. I'm George. George is not jealous or boastful. Mary is not jealous or boastful. Jerry is not jealous or boastful. Okay? I do not insist on my own way. I do not insist on my own way. I am not irritable. Oh. <laughs> I am not resentful. I do not rejoice at wrong. I rejoice in all that is right. I bear everything. Oh God, help me. I believe all things, hopes all things, I hope all things, and endures all things, far from it. So this is a test case, this is a list, litmus paper, litmus paper, to test our love. 
and we are coming to the, the well, we are coming close to Christmas. Christmas is the embodiment of love. Christmas is the embodiment of, and of love. And what do we find in the child Jesus in lying in the manger? Basically, I think, I believe, immediately, what, what, what comes to my mind is God's humility. We read it in the, in the, in the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, right? We read it in the second, uh, second chapter of the Philippians, and we read it um, God, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of human beings, born in human flesh. He emptied himself to the, I mean, to the point of death on a cross. He humbled himself that much. Therefore, God raised him. Therefore, God raised him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Why? Because he humbled himself. That is the Sacrificial element of God's love. Humility is part of divine love. And so, when we are just reflecting upon this theological virtue of charity, let us just understand that it is not speaking about the human kind of love at all. It is speaking about the divine essence of love. And the divine essence of love is patient, it is kind, it is sacrificial, it is selfless, it is enduring everything, foregoing everything, emptying oneself completely to the point of death. To the point of death. So, friends, let us interrogate ourselves. Let us interrogate ourselves. How much have I reached there? Have I loved in my life? Any one, any single individual, have I loved? Have I loved my husband? Have I loved, loved my wife? Have I loved my child? My son, my daughter? My father, my mother? Mm. If, we, if we are really sincere, many of us would come to the point where St. Francis St. Francis of Assisi, once he, used to, once he was praying, once he was meditating upon God, all of a sudden it struck him and he just rose from there and it seems that he ran. He ran through the streets of Assisi. He cried out. He cried out. He was crying actually. He was not just yelling, but he was, he was literally crying weeping and going about the streets of Assisi saying love is not loved brothers sisters love is not loved love is not loved so I only pray that we all have this realization during this Christmas as we prepare ourselves for this great day thank you